previously on the Infinite Escape Room. Why don't you make like an onion and get out of here? Do we have to butcher one of the cats to frighten the others away? I would like to point out that I do like cats, by the way. Oh, Oh. for fuck's sake. So... Hello and welcome to the Infinite Escape Room, the puzzling podcast where a group of geographically diverse pals meet up, have a couple of cheeky drinks, and work together to solve a homemade escape room of the ears. I'm Jamie, your host for this evening, and tonight I'm drinking a Jarl's Mead chili flavoured mead from Lancashire. Ooh. It is spicy and it is lovely. A spicy liqueurs are always so strange. How is it? It's delicious. Is it like Bernie Bernie or? It's nice. Like the the chili flavor is really subtle. It is mostly just the mead, the lovely, wonderful, delicious mead taste, <laughs> and the, the chili like is just a note at the very end. And I'm not normally one for spicy flavored drinks, but this one's it's lovely. The only problem is, as you can see, there's not much left of my bottle. Oh wow, so, wow. that's a fancy bottle. It is, and it's nearly empty. So I'm gonna have to. This, my birthday's months away, so who who knows what's gonna happen now. <laughs> going to be dry until October. If you're listening to this and you have some spare mead, you can send it to Jamie Direct at... <laughs> Please email me or, <laughs> or tweet me and uh, I will take any flavours of mead. Homemade, I'll take it. Commercial, I'll take it. If it's wet and it's made from honey, I will drink it. Hmm, that seems like a dangerous thing to um, I was about to say that. To offer. Yeah. What, what's the worst that could happen? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wet Again, honey. That's a dangerous <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I imagine Good. just some soggy honey would be awful. That's true. But if I leave it in the cupboard for a couple of months, maybe it'll ferment into something delicious. <laughs> this soggy honey is covered in mice and bees. <laughs> this is even worse. Mmm, crunchy mead. <laughs> <laughs> and locked in with me today, we have... I'm Laura, and I'm drinking an alcohol-free copper bird, which is basically fizzy squash. Delicious. It is, is it, delicious. How does it compare to the, the real deal? Tastes just the same. Ah, that's a slippery slope. Yeah, but it's 0.05%, so... So with enough of them, you could still get a buzz. You'd probably lose all your teeth, though. True. It's a lurch. I'll just see which, which goes first, <laughs> the diabetes <laughs> or the alcohol. <laughs> and I'm Mike, and because I've got a poorly belly, I'm drinking some delicious pucker citrus tea. This their joy tea, um, and it's bringing me not so much joy as just some hot flavoured water <laughs> into my poor tortured belly. Oh, dear. What kind of citrus are we talking? Is it just lemons or the whole shebang? <sighs> well... That's a really good question. It says, I think it just said citrus on the box. It's probably best not to think about. It's probably one of those things where it's like, it's made from people or, or something like that. But, you know, maybe they're rind. People rind and pith. Yum. <laughs> good old fashioned cannibalism. Mm hmm. Soylent tea. It's the way of the future. It's the way things are going. It probably is like the most environmentally friendly thing we could do, isn't it? Just consume yeah. one another. I think so. There's too many people as it is, so <laughs> lovely. We'll submit it to Parliament and see if we can get it approved. It's one of those petitions I guarantee would reach the hundred thousand mark on uh, that um, government petition site. International listeners may be interested to know that um, we have uh, on our government Parliament website a thing where you can submit um, something that you want to be uh, discussed in Parliament, and if it exceeds a thousand digital, uh, sorry, hundred thousand digital signatures, they will actually bring it up. Before we begin, I'd like to give a huge thank you to our Patreons for supporting us and all the weird stuff we do. You people are the wind beneath our wings, the candle in the window on a cold, dark winter's night, the salt in my coffee. Fuck, I should have written this down better. Um, And this week, I'm giving a special shout out to two of our wonderful Patreons, Colin Walker and Delana Andrews. Thanks very much to the both of you for keeping us off the streets and on the air. So, what is the Infinite Escape Room? Well, if you're a first-time listener, buckle up. If you've been with us since the beginning, after 200 episodes, you should hopefully get the gist so you can switch off for the next 30 seconds. But it's much like the escape rooms that you used to see in in the real world, but this one stretches across all known themes, dimensions, and multiverses. And because it's infinite, there's no bloody end to it. Every room in the infinite escape room links seamlessly into the next in one big, never-ending escape experience adventure. Each week... One of us will present a part of the infinite escape room, this week it's me, while the others try to solve it. If they don't escape within the allotted time, then very unpleasant things will happen to them. And if they break anything they're not supposed to, they will lose their deposit. And this week, I will uh, let you choose, Michael and Laura. What would your deposit be for this episode? Michael's cosy hoodie. 
Oh yeah, I'm wearing one of those. Um... It looks incredible. Oh, hang on, this is. I need to. I need to kind of stand up to give you the full glory of this. Oh my god! It's fleece lined. It's basically a wearable blanket hoodie. Listeners, you can't. If you could see this, this is incredible. So Meg's got what seems to be a combination of a duvet and a smoking jacket, <laughs> and like an E17 <laughs> looking parka, <laughs> all rolled into one. I, and it looks comfy as hell. It, it, it's literally called comfy. Um, they're not sponsored. Well, they're not. They probably are sponsored. We are not sponsored by them, but it's called a comfy. Um, and it's 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 absolutely lovely. I've fallen asleep in it twice now. Um, unplannedly um it's very very nice <laughs> well yeah it's, it's high stakes then but yes the deposit is mike's very comfy hoodie so please break something so you can send it to me as penance <laughs> <laughs> so are we ready as we let yes then let's enter the infinite escape room last time you just created an original turkey twizzler a glistening processed slice of heaven from the year 1999 you sent it back to the sentient potato sack Heston Blumenthal in a time-travelling pressure cooker, only to be transported to an alternate 1999 that's dominated by wild turkey dinosaurs. And burdened with the knowledge that you have only 23 years to go until the whole world turns to shit, you begin to hatch a plan to save the future. Or at least you were about to, before a colossal edible tyrannosaur leg thunders down right next to you. You decide to make like a tree and get the fuck out of Dodge. You hurtle your way across the dense canopy and spy a small structure about the size of a large shipping container. Before the turkey T-Rex can catch up with you, you cut across at a right angle and leg it to the container and slam the door shut behind you. You hear the T-Rex body slam against the shipping container and bellow out in a deafening roar that's part dinosaur, part turkey, before you hear the slow, thundering footsteps fading into the distance. As you catch your breath, you gaze around at what appears to be some kind of laboratory, The blinding fluorescent lights beam down on a clinically polished desk that contains all matter of scientific doohickery. There's a large machine that dominates the centre of the room, and off to the right, you see some lockers in a decontamination unit. Suddenly, a loudspeaker mounted high up on the opposite wall near an air duct crackles to life. Greetings, and welcome to the Mobile Genetic Modification Lab. If you're listening to this message, then the original mission has failed, and you are some kind of intruder hell-bent on industrial sabotage. Well, we can't have that. As he says this, you hear a faint hissing sound coming from the walls. This room will become saturated with gas in about 30 minutes. It would be faster, but it's all a bit DIY, and we're scientists, not engineers. In the meantime, please make yourselves comfortable, and please don't touch anything. Love and hugs. Bye! Now, how do you switch this fucking thing off? Yes, Jeff, I did press the button. I'm not a complete idiot. Damn it, man, I have three PhDs, and if I have to listen to your patronizing din any longer, I'll... Oh, wait, I I didn't press it, Huey. You have 30 minutes before the gas gets you. What would you like to do? Mm -hmm. Can I put two things in very quickly? Just throw, throw in two points. One, the beginning of that sounded so much like Ben that I had to check the webcam to make sure you hadn't snuck him into the room somehow. (laughs) <laughs> like your voice then was an absolute dead ringer for ben um <laughs> and the second was trying to hypothesize what a part dinosaur pipe turkey sound would be like and i could sort of like a half raw half gobble like a spot on i did try and practice it earlier in case this this question came up <laughs> but i think you've did it better than i i could i might just use that sample and just <laughs> extrapolate it champion okay that's that's that, that's literally that's basically all I could think about for the entirety of the puzzle. So, Laura. Uh, let's have a look at the large machine in the center of the room. Uh, the machine dominates the center of the room. Uh, there's, it's, it almost looks like a arm pressure machine. Uh, and on the side, it says Gene Splicer 4000. And there's a set of instructions on uh, the side of the machine. Uh, step one, insert the Zydroid file into the entry slot. Two. Insert arm into the activation chamber, palm up. Three, wait until the pain stops, then remove the arm. Four, congratulations, you have now been permanently enhanced. Why not try out your newfound abilities? Mm. Five, only one enhancement can be used at a time. Once Cydrid has been loaded, the gene splicer will remember it for future enhancements. Okay, so it looks like we might need to give ourselves some cool genetic superpowers. Maybe. Out of guess. (laughs) Okay. Um, looks from some side rate files and those things. 
Should have look at the lockers on the right hand side. So you see that there's um, three lockers and there's like a decontamination shower just off to the side of it. Two of the lockers are unlocked and one of the lockers is locked with a five letter padlock. Can we have a look in the two unlocked ones? So the, f- the first locker uh, contains not very much except for some risque posters taped to the inside and a digital clock that says the current date, March 20th, 1999. The second locker contains an assorted manner of skin-tight unitards, eye masks, capes, and knee-high boots. And there is a sticky note on the inside of that locker that I will paste into the chat again for you, if somebody could read that out. Okay, it reads, To do. Log latest attempts with new serum. Record voiceover for security system. Try turkey dinosaur meat. Unclog decontamination shower. This is going to be from the person who did the message for us earlier, and that suggests there might be something in the drain of the decontamination shower. Can we go um, take a look at the decontamination shower? It's a walk-in shower uh, with a shower head and a handle, and it's got like a wide drain, like a wide rectangular uh, drain for the water. You can turn the the shower on, and it spits out hot water. Um, Are we able to fish around in that drain at all? Uh, You stick your fingers in, you have a little little rummage around, um, and all you sort of find are little bits of hair that you can pull up. As a bald person who regularly unclogs the bath drain from a person with a lot of hair who i live with <laughs> i wonder who that could be who sheds like a husky could i kind of get it's always really gross but basically collect some of the clumpy fibers of hair up in my fingernails and then pull because that usually results in a massive fucking mouse's worth of um, hair coming out of the drain uh you do you try and give it a good old yank and a, a bit of hair comes out uh but not a great deal okay okay was there anything else in the room? Did you say there's a table covered in? Yes. On the opposite side of the of the room to the uh, lockers is um, sort of a desk area covered in scientific equipment. Anything of interest for us? Um, there's a lot of glass vials and tubes that stuff you don't exactly know what it does. Uh, there's a box of small test tubes uh, with filled with liquid and there's uh, torn pages of a journal. And there's also a, um, a locked drawer on that desk as well. That's just got a keyhole, no kind of combination lock or anything. You mentioned some torn journal pages. Can we have a look at those? So the journal has a number of entries, um, but they're not dated. Um, Quite a lot of pages are torn out, but you do have legible entries for entry 4, entry 17, entry 26, and entry 45. Yeah, it says entry 4 p.m., uh, we've been stranded in this alternative timeline for four days now. We're creating serum samples twice a day to speed up a potential breakthrough to get us home. The yellow vials are the morning samples and the red ones are the afternoon. Let me just write that down. Okay, and then entry 17, which is in the AM. We've managed to synthesize a few compounds with surprising properties. Each of us has hidden a compound somewhere in the lab to ensure protection in case we all turn on each other. And then entry 26, AM. I'm the only one left now. Uh, Jeff and Pedro decided to go for a walk and got eaten by turkey dinosaurs. Silly bastards, serves them right. Uh, But once I perfect this serum, I'm out of here. It'll be a stretch mind. And then the final entry, entry 45. This is a PM one. Since my breakthrough a week ago, I've been unable to replicate the Zydrate compound. I fear that I won't achieve the same success as I did that afternoon. That vial might be my only useful sample. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so yellow vials are morning samples, red vials are afternoon samples. Yeah, and it's um, success in the afternoon, so we're looking for a red yeah. sample that looks at things. And they're hidden in the lab. Yeah, there's an unknown number of people there, but they've each hidden the compounds. There's actually, no, there was ah, well, there was at least three. Yeah. Because I'm the only one left now. Jeff Jeff and Pedro decided to take a walk and eat by taking dinosaurs, but it doesn't mean there was uh, more people before that. But there was at least three. How many um, vials are there, Jamie? So in the box of um, of these small test tubes, there's a uh, hundred of them, numbered one to a hundred. And you do notice that the test tubes alternate between red and yellow. All the odd numbers are yellow and all the red numbers are even. Odd, yellow. Red or even. Okay. Uh, are there any uh, test tube vials that are filled at all? They all have liquid in them. Ah, okay. So some the the odd ones have yellow liquid and the red ones have red liquid? That is correct. Okay. Hmm. Have I missed anything else in the room? Uh, so we had the decontamination shower, we had the lockers, we had the big machine in the middle. Yeah. Um, and we've got the the lab table. I think that was everything in Jamie's original description. Jamie, have we missed anything? Um, the only thing um, that um, I mentioned was that next to the loudspeaker on the opposite wall, there was an air duct. Hmm. We should probably go and check that out. Uh, you can. It is very high. You can't see. You can see it, but you can't reach it. It looks like it's big enough 
to crawl around in, the kind that Bruce Willis uh, likes to wander in. But yeah, it's at least 12 feet up off the ground. You can't reach it. Hmm. Three lures. Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Trying to be freakishly tall. Going back to the lockers, the one that had the various superhero costumes in, is there anything in them at all? Or is it just unitards, gloves and boots and masks? Just Yeah, just an assortment of uh, what, what you hope is superhero cosplay and not too much some sort of perverted gimp wear there's a there's a lot of latex in pvc sweaty so you said the other one had to yeah the other one just has some some naughty posters and uh, a digital clock that has the current date can we pull the naughty posters off the back of the locker you can no there's nothing behind them but you do have now a portable naughty poster Awesome. Well, it was win-win then, because I was thinking it might be a Shawshank Redemption style thing where somebody had dug a, dug a tunnel behind the poster, but excellent. <laughs> and is the digital clock just a digital clock? Yeah, just you fiddle with the buttons, but it just shows the date. Uh, does it show the time as well? Um, it shows a, a timer that's counting down. You currently have 19 minutes and 45 seconds remaining. Okay. Hmm. Um, ah. So the shower. Yeah. Going back to the decontamination shower, can I run the water in there to see if I can flood it? You can, you run the water and some of it goes into the drain, but after a while it starts to pool just a little and then nothing seems to happen. Okay, I was wondering if there might be like something under the drain that we could maybe bob to the surface. So things that we need to, I guess, try and do are get to the air vent, unclog the drain and decipher this five digit. Can we just take one of the red files? As you said, there's some in the box. And just have a go in the machine and see what happens. Yeah, uh, which number of 1 to 100, which one would you like? Uh, let's try 4. Sure, you put number 4 into the machine. Who wants to stick their arm in? I'll do it. You pop your arm in, there's searing agony for approximately 5 seconds, and then you arm comes out, and a little red <coughs> flashes on the gene splicer. So the mind. enhancement was unsuccessful. I was worth a try. Something. Give us superpowers and we could like jump up and get into the vent or something. Hmm. Okay. Um how's about we try vial number thirty-four, which should hopefully be hmm. Okay, let's try vial number thirty-four. Sure. Uh you do the same. Vial number thirty-four goes in, you stick your arm in, searing pain, and then it'll <laughs> Enhancement and successful. Val number thirty-three. That's a, that's a yellow. Yeah, that's a yellow one in there. Uh, and we know the red. The red ones are, are bad. No, wait. What do the red ones do again? Red one was the afternoon, the PM slots. And there was something else about the red ones as well, wasn't there? It was um... uh, the even numbers. Ah, yeah, yeah. Can we can we try thirty-three? Uh, you put thirty-three in. Another searing pain. Another little little dot in your arm. But <laughs> enhancement and successful. What was your logic behind that? Uh, I was thinking, um, so we've got the journal entries. What say they were doing two per day? Um, so the numbers, the numbering would basically be halved by the, the, the journal entries. So entry 17, for example, might correspond with uh, test tube 34 and 33, mm-hmm. um, which was, and that was the day they synthesized a few compounds with surprising properties. So I was kind of hoping to test the theory with some surprising po- compound properties. Oh, so you're on the right track with that. Uh, ah, okay. there's also, mm, okay. So there's since my breakthrough a week ago, um, which was entry 45. Um, so if we went back a week from 45, that would give us 38, 38, um, if, assuming it's exactly a week ago. Um, so if we did, uh, number 76. Yeah, we did vial number 76 and tried that. Sure. Uh, you load vial 76 into the machine. Um, who wants to put their arm in this time? It's my turn this time. Uh, Laura, put your arm in. There's a whir and searing pain for five seconds. You emerge and a little bing pops out. Enhancement. Successful. And a little picture of a rubber band appears on the gene splicer. Well, there's something about being a bit of a stretch somewhere, wasn't there? It'll be a stretch mind. Yeah. Oh, could you... Laura, are you able to stretch to the... The vent. To, the duct, to the duct, yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. So you can um, you stretch your body as naturally as, as riding a bike. Arm stretches up, your full body goes up, you're able to see inside the air duct. And what you see is a fan blade that's spinning incredibly fast on the uh, about two meters into the, the air duct. And that's it. Booger. 
So you are currently 12 feet tall and sort of stretched really thin. And this is incredible. I still need to work out what the five-letter lock is on the, sh- on the lockers. Yeah. Uh, We've been playing a lot of Wordle recently. I feel <laughs> that should help. I wonder if there's any more vials to be found in this message. Um, so entry 45 is the one where he's talking about a successful one. Mm-hmm. Entry 26 doesn't seem to suggest um, that there's anything, but it's a, the one that's kind of got the, the stretchy hint. Entry 17... We've managed to synthesize a few compounds with surprising properties. Each of us has hidden a compound somewhere in this lab to ensure protection in case we all turn each other. So it might be safe to assume that those ones are hidden somewhere. Yeah. Um, ah. hmm. <laughs> hmm. Can we, could Laura stretch her stretchy thinness into the uh, the drain, maybe to unblock it? Would you like to do that? Yeah, why not? So you stretch your hand into the shower drain, not knowing exactly what's on the other side. Uh, you feel uh, hair. Lots of hair, like a ton of hair, very clumpy, horrible hair. And you do grab onto something hard and pull it back. And the force of that object coming back up is enough to pop up on the drain cover. Uh, you do see that you've found a vial of blue liquid that's been wrapped up in a pair of red underpants. Hmm. Oh, that might be, that might have come from the superhero yeah. locker. Um, okay, can, can I take that over to the uh, the machine and, uh, and and gene splice myself with the blue vial? Certainly. Uh, so you put the, the Zydrate into the machine, stick your arm in, five seconds of agony, you pop out, and a little bing! Enhancement. Successful. And there's a little picture of a pair of glasses on the gene splicer. Am I short-sighted now? Have I gene spliced myself like poor eyesight? <laughs> well, as you um, as you try to figure out what it is that it's done to you, um, you start to see that you can see Laura's skeleton. Hi, Craig Glasses. Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I see your bones. Okay, so X-ray vision. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> hey, hey. Do you want to have a sneaky look in that locked locker with your X-ray vision? Yeah, yeah, let's go for that. Uh, you gaze at the, uh, the locked locker and you just see a black cuboid um it's almost as if someone has lined the locker with lead okay and as we all know famously x-ray vision does not work on lead according to scripture can i use my x-ray vision to look into the key locked drawer please in the desk yes you look through that locked desk and you see a small stack of comic books um and then taped to the back of the drawer uh you see this note that i will pop into all the chat for you. And don't worry, this is my only handout for the day. 07639 in, um, what's the word? Old clock format. <laughs> I don't know. So the the, the passcode earlier was described as a five-letter one. Correct. Was. Hmm. Hang on. If we, fl- okay, so it's 07639, but like a kind of like an old alarm clock, like one of those old LCD alarm clocks. If we flip that upside down, it would look like Beplo. Um, can I try B E P L O in the five digit combination lock, please? Certainly. You put in Beplo into the lock and you jiggle it, nothing happens. Oh, I thought I was being really sharp there. Beplo. Dang. I want to Google what that is. You have 10 minutes remaining. Oh, no. <laughs> I, say, I say, I'm assuming it's 3 9, by the way, the last digit. Uh, yes. It can't really be anything else. Yeah. There's not enough of it missing to. Yeah, I wasn't sure if JB was doing a sneaky. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to encroach on your turf, Mike. <laughs> 07639. So things we still need to do. We need to work out maybe a way around these super Can I take a look at the uh, the spinny fan blade in the X-ray specs? Um you can. You can't reach it though. Uh, I guess can I just look at the uh, the duct? Uh yeah, you look at the duct. Um you can see through the metal into the the vent, but you just see the spinny fan blades. Actually, you can see behind the fan blades. There do, does seem to be something behind there. Okay. Can we take the various bits of superhero costume out of the other locker and just jam them at the fan and see if that stops it from, from you working? You can certainly do that, yeah. So you super stretch up and you stuff all the superhero costumes at the fan and the fan tears it to shreds. No. Um, this is some really, this, this, these fan blades are sharp as shit. Damn it. Okay, so we need to do something to stop the fan blades. Can I see where? Uh, can I see uh, any wiring for the fan blades with the X-ray vis? Uh, you can't. Okay, no. It is no. mysteriously powered. Okay, hmm. But they didn't consider that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like maybe we need to find something else first. So the the locked bit of the 
desk drawer. And the only thing in there that we can see that seems to be useful is that um, that scrap of note with the numbers on. Uh, yes, yeah, so there was a stack of comic books, and then taped to the back of that door of the drawer was the number. Okay. Uh, was there anything else on the desk? So we had, let's see, the journal entries, the vials. Uh, was there anything else? Uh, nothing of note. Okay. It was, I remember, sort of laboratory bric-a-brac, wasn't there? Yeah, various, various glass set dressing. Okay, I'm just wondering if it's worth trying stuff on the, the five-letter lock. Like, there's, there's this comic books and there's superhero stuff, maybe super or something like that in it. Uh, you certainly can. You try super in the lock and nothing happens. Nope. Which is good because super was the original combination before I changed it today. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so thank God. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Can hmm, can I change the date on the little clock in the first locker? You can't. It is stuck on 20th of March, 1999. Hmm. You have six and a half minutes remaining. I think we might need a little steer. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so you weren't far off by trying those numbers upside down. Um, but yeah, bear in mind how you found those uh, that note. Taped to the back of a drawer. With me in Vizzy specs. Hmm. Pedro. Can we try ah. Pedro in the lock? I was so close. I was so <laughs> close. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. So you put Pedro into the five letter lock. It opens. Uh, inside, you see a lab coat and a pair of goggles. Uh, can I go? Can I put both on um, and then go through the pockets of the lab coat? Sir, so, sure. You uh, look like a crazy scientist. Uh, inside the pocket of the lab coat is a vial of silver liquid. Lord, do you want to? Juice up, or shall yeah, I? Yeah, why not? Cool. So, Laurie, you uh, stick your arm into the machine. Um, as you do, the little light blinks on the rubber band, so you've lost that enhancement. You put the, the violin, searing pain for five seconds, and bing! Enhancement successful. And a little uh, icon of a clock appears. Can I stop time? <laughs> um, as you, you concentrate to see what's going on, um, time doesn't seem to stop. Um, but it does slow down significantly. And as you look, the digital clock on in the locker starts to tick up from 1999 up to oh, 2000. Okay. So time seems to be moving faster outside your little bubble. But for everything else, yeah, time seems to slow down considerably for you. Hmm. What should I be um, doing in this time? Like, so we've, so we've... Oh, well, Law, if I stick my arm in and apply stretchy powers to myself... I could stretch you up to the vent. You could slow time down yeah. and reach in between the fan blades. Yeah, let's try while that. While it's spinning slowly. So yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Arm in thing, uh, juice up with stretchy powers, stretchy lift Laura up to the duct so that she can slow time. Sure. So make you put your arm in, uh, you lose the X-ray vision enhancement. And, and again, another five seconds of searing agony and another little uh, pock mark on your arm. It blinks with the rubber band. So you now have the stretchy powers. You... Raise yourself up 12 feet up into the locker. Um, Laura, I'm guessing you're going to climb, Mike? Why not? <laughs> Ascend, Mike, and call into the, the vent and use your slow down time powers to slow the fan down, which slows to a crawl. Uh, you are able to get to the other side of the vent, uh, and you do see that there is um, there are two small vials of green liquid. Grab them, Laura, grab them. I'm going to grab those and scrap them back down to the machine. Sweet. Um, so you've got the, the vials of green liquid, pop them into the machine. Um, who would like to stick their arm in? Uh, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'm starting to look like, um, yeah, somebody in a Swansea bus stop at this point. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you stick your arm in, you lose the super stretchiness. Again, agony for a few seconds. And then, bing, enhancement successful. And it appears with a little green icon of a fist. Can I look at my fists? Your fists look heavy. So do I do the same thing and do I get the same result? Uh, you pop your arm in as well. Um, and yes, the little thing was bing. And you also have the fist icon. You are both enhanced with the same ability. Cool. Should we try and biff on some walls or something? Try and see if we can break out. Yeah, let's if the door maybe. Uh, the door you came through? He, yeah. Is there yeah. another one? That is the only one. Cool. Uh, it's, it is, it's currently buckled in by the force of the T-Rex. You can't open it normally again. Um, so yeah, what do you want to do? Um, uh, can we do a Steven Seagal roundhouse kick? Actually, no, was it Steven Seagal who did the roundhouse kick? But it's our fists that are big. Was it Chuck Norris? Oh, you've, oh yeah. It's a super, super strength, at least. Yeah, let's let's beat the crap out of the door. Yeah, R roundhouse hand kick. 
(laughs) (laughs) Certainly. With 90 seconds remaining and with super serum coursing through your veins, you raise your fists, double punch the doors like it owes you money. The doors burst open and disintegrate under the force, folding in and folding like soggy paper. As you step outside, you're greeted not by a dense canopy and wild turkey dinosaurs, but by a large statue of a reclining lion. All around you is the deafening cacophony of double-decker buses, tourist babble, and pigeons shitting uncontrollably. (coughs) Above the lion stands a giant sculpture of five interlocked circles of differing colours, under which hangs the giant banner that says, The end is nigh. It appears you've landed in Trafalgar Square in the year 2012, smack bang in the middle of the London Olympics, and five months before the impending Mayan apocalypse. To be continued. (laughs) You saw my puzzle. Congratulations. Oh, well really? done, mate. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> you are now enhanced with super strength, the both of you. So good luck, Ben, in uh, <laughs> getting the next episode without those. <laughs> oh, that was really good. That was really, really well put together. That was a fun one. That was really uh, lots of fun components in that. Oh, yeah, enjoyed that. Thanks. I, I was I was worried that like there wasn't much puzzly elements to it other than that bit of, that bit of math at the start to work out what vial to get, um, which is why I changed the, the code f- uh, from Super, which Laura guessed quickly, uh, to Pedro, because uh, I remembered that you managed to guess the word honey, honey. the yeah. Hanadika word episode. Right, okay, so can't <laughs> use an obvious. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys did really well. Amazing. No, you said that was, oh, uh, that was tight. really, really beautifully put together. I'm enjoying the ending as well. I'm looking forward to seeing what Ben does with that. I hope he rolls with the Olympics <clears throat> thing, because that was a brighter time. Yeah, well, are- I... I, I tried to think of um, at what points between the year 1999 and now did the timeline diverge into the darkest timeline? Um, and I'm thinking Y2K was the first one, the Mayan Apocalypse was the second, and then 2016 as a whole, that was another one. Harambe, yeah. yeah R.I.P. Harambe. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm of that age now that if ever I raise a toast to Harambe after work in the pub, I just get stares from the <laughs> 20-somethings and the Gen Z is going, the fuck old man. <laughs> it was Harambe. Yeah. The wrong ape died that day. <laughs> yes. Agreed. <laughs> if you support Harambe, please write in to the Infinite Escape Room. <laughs> um, there is a, um, a bad ending, if you'd like to hear it. Yeah. You feel your vision begin to darken as the gas fully saturates the lab, and you close your eyes for just a moment to get your breath. All fades to black. After what seems like a century of dreamless sleep, you hear voices around you. You begin to wake and feel that you're being carried. You tentatively open one eye just a little to see that you're each being carried on a stretcher by two burly men with biker tattoos and leather jackets. You hear two of them talking. This one's not got much meat on them. They need a lot of seasoning. Still, it's better than fucking dinosaur meat again. But can't we have a little nibble now? Don't be stupid. You know he likes to inspect the ingredients beforehand. We'd be done for if he saw we'd interfere with this process. Yeah, you're right. Hi, Heston. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, as always, I uh, I almost wish that we'd failed so that we could have had your bad ending as the one that has uh, started the next episode because Heil Hester is just such a It's the fourth time in a row that that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting that I'm getting that put on the merch list. Heil, Heil Heston. Heston. Yeah, I wonder how litigious Heston Blumenthal is. Well wait to find out. You haven't got to use his image or anything, you can just draw a face on a thumb. <laughs> I honestly thought we we weren't going to make it. I was like, ah. it was close. It was close. I was I was worried I was going to do one of my classic <laughs> too hard puzzles. <laughs> Recently, I've swung between ten minutes or three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so the middle ground no, is still th- 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 those journal entries genuinely had me foxed for a while, and then it was the vials, and it was like, oh, hang on, I think. Maybe, and I think you gave it a little nudge and nudge, and it was like, oh, thank God. Yeah, I didn't get the math clues at all. Yeah, you were, you were on the right track. Just had to pick, the, pick a different day. Thank you so much for listening. You can subscribe to us on all of your podcast or streaming services of choice, as well as on our website, www.theinfiniteescaperoom.com. You can also follow us and get in touch, shout our praises and hurl abuse at us via Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at tier underscore podcast on the first two and The Infinite Escape Room on the last If you enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you did, I'd be very much obliged if you could leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook. It's a huge help in getting more people to find out about us. Or, if you'd like to throw a few coppers into our hat, then why not join our Patreon? Head on over to patreon.com slash the infinite escape room, where you can listen to episodes a week early, get a shout out on the show, listen to the raw chaos in our unedited episodes, and if you're really lucky, I'll write you a letter. But this won't be an ordinary letter. 
It will be addressed exclusively to you. It contain puzzles, codes, and ciphers. I might even dip it in tea and seal it with wax so it looks like it came from a wizarding school or something. Well, that's a genuine offer, by the way. I will do that for the super special Patreons. It's not a, a weird thing that I'm just saying. I mean, it's it's also a weird thing. Let's. <laughs> no, it's both. It's it's the centre of that Venn diagram. I will I will harass you with weird looking post. And, and I won't. That'll be my bonus to you, is that I, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mercy. We love you lots, and we'll see you next time on the Infinite Escape Room. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.